Hey Cancer, welcome to your love and romance reading for May 2022. This is for Cancer Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. We're going to connect here and see what messages are coming up for the Cancer Collective. Keep in mind, you might stumble upon this video after me. Uh, that's just fine. You're going to find it whenever you're meant to hear the messages. This is a general reading for the Collective. Therefore, not every single message is going to resonate. Take what does and leave what doesn't. So without further ado, my dears and my darlings... Let's connect and see what messages are coming up here for Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. So your first card that's coming up here, and we're going to move you a little bit closer so I'm not reaching so far over the camera, is the High Priestess. Now this could be Pisces and Taurus energies, okay? Some of you could be dealing with a Pisces or Taurus. If you have a Pisces or Taurus placement, there can be big changes or big shifts in those areas of your life that are positively improving your love life or aligning you with a significant soulmate. Um, I feel here, though, like as I'm looking at this intuitively, I feel there's a progression of moon cycles so I would say from uh, the first new moon in May to the full moon to the following new moon, there could be really significant changes happening for you in your love life around the moon cycles from the new moon to the next new moon. Um, the high priestess is also a card that can come up when there's in intense attraction or intense physical uh chemistry however high priestess for me is a card that comes up a lot of the times when you're coming into a really high level of healing and you have really really high vibration energy running through you uh and you're connecting with your healing gifts and abilities and this may make you very 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 irresistible to where you have a lot of attention coming your way. You have a lot of people pursuing you. You have a lot of people wanting to be near you. And they're like moths in a dark room rushing towards you because you're this bright candle in a dark place. So one of the things you need to learn when you're in high priestess energy is that you will have people pursue you super, super persistently. But just because someone is persistent, it doesn't mean that they're ready, okay? Or that they're serious or that they know what they want. It's more, as I said, they're kind of like hypnotized by you, like the moth. The moth doesn't understand what it's rushing towards when it's rushing towards a flame. You know, it's not ready for that flame, that sometimes people pursue you so persistently, but they're not ready for you, Cancer. They can't handle you. They're, they're, they're not ready for what it is that you are. So be prepared for that. Be prepared to be pursued in the month of May and to be getting a lot of attention, okay? Uh, but somebody's got to walk the walk. It's not enough for them to talk to the talk. They got to walk the walk and show that they're ready. Or show that they're at your level. Because the thing you need to keep in mind, since you have this really healing energy flowing through your body, you may be attracting a lot of people uh, who are kind of broken or uh, wounded and in need of healing. And uh, it's not because you're low vibrational or that there's something wrong with you. It's because you have this delicious healing energy flowing through your body that they're they're wanting to attach to you they're scared to do their own work and they're wanting to tap into you and feed off of your energy like an energy vampire uh and so you're gonna learn you're gonna learn to be a better judge of character and you're gonna learn to catch this more quickly and go okay all right i know what this chemistry here is with this person it's not meant for me to pursue right? And just because people need healing 
that doesn't mean that you're responsible or that you're obligated to take them on as a project. You know, you're not meant to heal every single person that, that you encounter in a hands-on way. You can pray for them. You can send them love and light. You can do a little meditation for them and put them in uh, the hands of their guardian angels and guides. Uh, you can send that healing to their higher self. But it doesn't mean that you have to date the person or that you have to, uh, you know, pull them out of the ditch or that you need to uh, take each and every one of these people into your bed. You don't have to do that. And so I feel cancer that in the month of May, a lot of you are learning to tell the difference between the different types of attraction. Whereas in the past, it got you in trouble, especially if you're an intuitive person, especially if you're a light worker. And you're like, what's going on? What's wrong? Why do I attract this? What do I need to heal? It's not about you having to change something about you. You're going to attract this. You're going to attract this because a lot of you are healers, right? And people who are wounded are going to be attracted to healers. It's just the nature of the game. But you're going to learn to spot it more quickly. And you're going to be able to tell the difference of the different types of attraction. And healthy attraction versus entanglement attraction. Or broken and healer attraction. You're going to learn to tell the difference. Okay, This is a major arcana card. So the major arcana cards always come up during significant times in our life, a new chapter, a defining moment. So there's a lot of growth here. Uh, also, the High Priestess is a card that comes up when we need to learn to trust our intuition. Your intuition is guiding you to the right situation, to the right relationship, to the truth and to the heart of the matter. Something came up for Aries where they were going to be really able to sniff out anything that wasn't truthful they were going to see through any kind of bs right away and i'm getting a very similar vibe from the high priestess card for you guys aries didn't get high priestess as far as i can remember they didn't get this card but this card is giving me a very similar vibe to the energy that was coming in for aries so um just know and understand um, that there's a significant shift here happening for you guys where uh, you're not going to you're not going to uh, fall for anybody's BS. The next card that's coming up here for cancer is the ace of Wands and this is passion okay this is fire energy. And the Ace of Wands oftentimes comes up when we're being encouraged to seize an opportunity. Now, what I'm feeling here, because as I said, the High Priestess can have strong attraction and strong physical energy with it, uh, physical intimacy energy, or a strong pull or a st strong draw towards physical intimacy. And so I feel, Cancer, that some of you are having to give yourselves permission to explore that physical side of yourself. Some of you may be experiencing really powerful movement or really powerful shifting happening in your root chakra. And this can be unlocking a lot of powerful energy. And this could be a big part of your healing for some of you. Or like your empowerment or taking your power back through physical intimacy and giving yourself permission to like what you like and to want what you want and to uh to to let yourself have these experiences uh to allow yourself to connect with your passion and to be in your passion right some of you have been sacrificing passion for love and because you learned at some point that the presence of passion doesn't automatically mean that there's love there. You learned at some point in the past that passion and love aren't the same thing. And just because there's passion and intensity, it doesn't mean that you love that person. It doesn't mean that that person loves you. And so some of you have like completely and totally written off passion as a result. 
And now you're realizing, wait a minute, just because the presence of passion doesn't mean there's love here, there does not mean that the absence of passion means that love is here, right? Some of you sacrificed passion in the pursuit of love and you're like, well, there's no love here. There's no passion here. This is just more of a friendship. This is just more somebody that I like as a friend. You know, I'm not in love with them. I don't have romantic feelings for them. I don't feel passion for them. And you're like, oh, okay. So I don't have to sacrifice passion for romance. And so I feel that a lot of you are shifting the way that you're going about your relationships or the way that you're going about dating. And intuitively, I feel for some of you cancers, if you've been dating somebody and you're kind of coming out of it, I feel like for some of you cancers, there's like somebody lurking in the shadows, like waiting for their turn with you. So this is somebody that's been kind of around as a friend, right? Like kind of like waiting, like I'm getting the visual of like playing double dutch or uh, playing jump rope on the playground, right? Like you're waiting for the rope to be in the right position before you can jump in. This person's just waiting and waiting and waiting. Okay, now, and they're going to jump in. So don't be surprised if for some of you, all of a sudden you're coming out of a relationship or you're deciding that you're ready to date after a long period of time and somebody is like ready to go and you're like, whoa, where is this coming from? They've been waiting a long time. They've been waiting a long time to feel like you would be open or receptive to their offer. And for a lot of you, there's going to be a very strong passion with this person or a very strong passionate connection. The next card that's coming up here for you all is the King of Wands. Lots of passion, I told you all. Fire galore. Fire galore. Maybe some of you are dealing with an Aries. Maybe this uh, uh, truthful, like spotting out the truth is you guys are like on a very similar uh, wavelength right now, a very similar vibe. And so you may be getting attracted to one another, even though I know oftentimes it is said that fire and water aren't the most compatible. However, a lot of it depends on your placements and it is my personal belief that all relationships have their challenges. Some relationships are more challenging than others. But regardless of your zodiac sign, I feel like if two people are mature and committed to making something work, they're going to make it work. They're going to find a way to communicate. They're going to find a way around the issues. So I'm not one of those people who's like, oh, this sign can't be with that sign. It depends on your maturity level. It depends on your level of interest. It depends on a lot of things. Now, the king of wands, let's put the zodiac aside here for a moment. The king of wands uh, can be somebody who's coming in who's very much like a self-made man or self-made person. This is someone who hasn't had opportunities handed to them. Everything they have in their life They've had to work their butt off for. They've had to work very hard. And so they have a sense of humility. They remember where they come from. They remember their roots. They haven't forgotten. And so for a lot of you, you're in this relationship with somebody who's very successful, but also very humble, very grounded, very compassionate. Uh, this is someone who wants to see others doing well. And uh, is always going to be ready to mentor, to teach, to volunteer, to give. So some of you, as you're tapping into your desires uh, to heal and your energy as a healer, maybe you're feeling a little philanthropic. Maybe you're feeling generous and you're wanting to uh, be involved in organizations or charities and volunteer and you may be meeting a very significant soulmate or lover in that process for some of you. Because the King of Wands is all about uh, serving their community and giving back. They're thankful for what they have. 
and they want to give back to their community and they want to help others to thrive and to succeed okay um i will say a word of caution those of you who are parents I do feel those of you who are parents or single parents, if you have a child uh, who's in some kind of uh, sports activity um, or some kind of uh, elective uh, activity outside of academics, um, that coach or that teacher may be interested in you they may be pursuing you uh and there may be a lot of chemistry or a lot of passion here but intuitively i feel like this is something that's not gonna be a secret that can be kept and it will come out into the open and obviously there are certain people who are gonna be like yeah sure that stuff happens and then there's gonna be other people who want to make it a big controversy controversy and a big old scandal and so this is something you need to be prepared for you to keep in your in your mind if you absolutely positively are like oh no I, I could not handle people knowing I could not handle people finding out if that's how you feel don't get involved because I feel like it's gonna come out into the open and it's going to be known so uh, and as far as like it being out in the open or as far as like it being known I don't necessarily feel like it's the end of the world and I don't feel like you need to be embarrassed but if you're just somebody who you're like no I just like I can't handle that then I would just say don't get involved with this person it's a very specific message so obviously it's not going to be for every single one of you but I do feel that that's the case for some of you because sometimes with the king of wands he is really wanting to help future generations or train or mentor future generations uh, uh, to succeed. So I feel for some of you, this could be someone who is mentoring your child. Okay. Um, I And again, I don't feel like this is somebody where like, if things don't continue with you all, or if you decide you don't want to be with this person, I feel that this is somebody mature enough to where they're going to be able to go about business as usual. They're not going to like be like, well, I'm not going to work with your kid anymore. Or, uh, I don't feel like they would be that way. Uh, again, very specific message. It's not going to be for every single one of you. The next card that's coming up here for you all is the chariot. And this makes me super happy. Super happy. Well, it is a major arcana card. So we know big changes for you all in May positive changes, positive growth. Now, uh, traditionally speaking, the chariot can be a card of movement and focus. Um, it's a card that a lot of you have heard me say. It always makes me think of the quote by Ralph Waldo Emerson when he said, once we make a decision, the universe conspires to make it happen. And so you're coming into a time where your lesson is free will. And some of you cancers have been really caught up with, who is my person? Who am I supposed to be with? And some of you may be having to choose between more than one partner with this king of wands personality here. And then somebody you're feeling very drawn to or very pulled to with this high priestess energy. We did say you're going to be pursued by a lot of people. And so a lot of you are like, which one do I choose? Who do I choose? Who am I supposed to be with? And that's the whole thing about the chariot. This is a situation where there is no supposed to be with. This is a situation where it's like, well, my dear, your life lesson here, what you're supposed to learn in this lifetime is to exercise your free will. Who do you want? Who does cancer want? Because a lot of you are coming out of several lifetimes where you haven't been given a choice. It's just been like you get what you get and you don't get upset. But this is a situation where you get to choose. And so some of you are having to choose between several people pursuing you, several possibilities, several options. And the chariot, the reason why it made me so happy to see it 
This is your card, Cancer. So when I'm reading for somebody and their major arcana card comes up, it tells me that this is a situation directly connected to you coming into your authenticity and coming into your power and living your best life unapologetically going for what you want and what makes you happy and falling in love with yourself in a non-narcissistic way. The things that you thought were flaws you're realizing are actually uh, really great characteristics or really wonderful tools that you can make use of when implemented positively. And so there's a sense here of being in your power. And when I'm reading for two people and one of the people's major arcana cards comes up, it tells me that you're the, that, or that that person is the one that's going to have the final say in a lot of the situations or in a lot of the decisions. That's the person who's in power, okay? If you're a cross watcher and you're watching this, I'm sorry if you don't like hearing that. But for me in my readings, uh, like if I'm reading for two people and one of them has the major arcana card comes up, that tells me that you're the one that is going to, uh, I don't know if I want to say be wearing the pants. That might be too strong of a term to use. But you're going to have a lot of pull. You're going to have a lot of the times the last word or the final say. Or things are going to go according to like what you're saying or what you want. And maybe for some of you, you're like, well, that's never happened for me before. Or maybe some of you are realizing you need that. Some of you might be realizing that you need a more uh, submissive person. Again, if you're a cross watcher watching this, maybe this is not for your cancer. Don't get upset at me. Don't get mad at me. Maybe this is not for the cancer you're dealing with. But some of you cancers may be really feisty, really in your passion, really being in your energy, really being in your confidence, uh, and really being in this like take charge energy. And you're not wanting someone who's going to be challenging you on that or competing with you, right? And some people will say, oh, you're being so toxic. I've used the word submissive before. And I, the, the couple of times it's come up, some people have had a super negative reaction to it. You got to understand something. There are people who are by nature submissive and they like to be submissive. It doesn't mean that they like to be mistreated or that they like to be treated badly. It's like it's become a dirty word and it's not a dirty word. Okay, and, and, you, and you guys need to understand that submissive doesn't mean that you put yourself in a toxic situation or that you let people mistreat you. That's not what it is to be submissive. Submissive could be, I don't have to make all the decisions. I kind of want to be in the passenger seat. I don't want to be steering all the time. I don't want to be driving all the time. And and some people, that makes them happy. And so cancer, some of you are like, well, I want to drive. I want to drive. And I just want somebody who's going to be company in that process, not telling me which way to go or, 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 or trusting in my decisions. You know, and so when I say submissive, this is what I mean. You may want to check out your moon sign, your rising sign, your Venus sign, if this is none of those, because sometimes your moon, your rising, or your Venus might resonate more for you. You may need a private reading, which I'm more than happy to do for you all. You can click on the link in the description of this video. It will take you to calendly.com slash amethystangelite, and you can schedule a private reading with me there. Uh, don't forget to check out the weekly forecast where I talk about everything other than love and romance, as well as every single day I pull a daily message. I thank you all for watching, liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing. Have a wonderful, wonderful May. Take care and be well, my dears. Bye, Cancer.